In this video, we'll be talking about what the current best builds in Season 21 are. Going through pretty much every single role, starting with Aronda and starting with one of the current strongest Pokemon in the entire game in Serial Edge. has two very strong builds. Either you can go Phantom Force Psycho Cut or Phantom Force and Bitter Blade. Flame Charge is also totally fine. And then for the items, you can see up there, we play Muscle, Razor, and Scope Lens for the Psycho Cut build. And for Bitter Blade, we go for a Tech Bait Weakness Policy, and then either Muscle Band or Razor Claw. Next up, we have Gyarados, also very, very strong Pokemon right now. Dragon Breath and Bounce is the way to go. You can also play Waterfall definitely if you feel like it's a good game for it. It's a move that is super, super strong if it has the right scenarios. If the enemies have a lot of CC, then Bounce just has that permanent unstoppable effect that gets a lot done. Currently, you play Muscle Band, Attack Bait, and for the last item, it can either be Scope Lens, it can be Charging Charm, or Energy Amplifier, which Energy Amplifier is definitely the choice that most people go for. Next, one of the biggest winners for Season 21 is Charizard, currently banned a lot, almost first pick every single draft game, because its Unite move is so strong now that Charizard is pretty much always a safe pick. Personally, Attack Bait, uh, Scope Lens is something I always go for. And for the third item, you can either go for Weakness Policy to even make Attack Bait even stronger as well. And you also get hit a lot because you're kind of a melee Pokemon still, even though you have ranged basic attacks. Or you just go for Charging Charm as it got buffed and is pretty good now. Zashin is also still a great choice. You can play it in Central Area or Top and Bot Path. Pretty much works anywhere. I personally play Muscle Razor Claw. And then for the moves, we go for Sacred Sword and Agility. It's just by far the most consistent. I know a lot of Meta Claw lovers in the comments probably after this. But if you want to win actively, definitely Sacred Sword and Agility is the way to go for Zashian. Dragon Knight, another great all-rounder, mainly only played in Central Area though, of course. I think currently Dragon Dance and Outrage is the best build to carry ranked games with, but of course you can also play Hyper Beam if you feel like the enemy team comp doesn't really allow you to play Outrage. The nice part about Dragon Knight is you can play Muscle Band, Razor Claw and Scope Lens in both builds with Full Heal, and then you can just look at the enemy team comp and decide what to go for. If you're in Draft or something and you don't necessarily need to go for Hyper Beam, you can also try Charging Charm now instead of Razor Claw as it does a lot of damage now since it, you know, got buffed and you can build it up even faster. And Shari, no, Dragon Knight actually has quite big basic attacks as well. Another one of the current best Pokemon in the game is definitely Blaziken. Can be played in Center Area, Top Path or Bot Path. I personally still go for Double Stacking Muscle Band. If you play it in Center Area, you can also just only play Attack Weight or not even play a stacking item at all and just replace some with like Weakness Policy, Razor Claw, Resonant Guard. Always a good item. So Blaziken just can control a game so easily, you have good objective clear as well, and your team fighting is actually quite, quite good. Of course, it can be quite difficult sometimes if the enemies have a lot of CC, but if you play around us, if you want to win games, then Blaziken is one of the best choices by far. For Shifu's back to being a playable Pokemon with even two builds at the same time, you can either go for Water Bear and Surging Strikes, if you go Muscle Band, Razor Claw, Attack Weight, or you go the Cool Reduction build where you replace either Muscle, Razor Claw with Energy Amplifier and also go for Black Emblems, or you can just play Dark Bear and take over objectives and just take on enemy carries, and for that we play Muscle, Razor, and Attack Weight. One of my favorite Aronos currently is definitely Guard Chomp with Muscle Band, Rapid Fire Scarf, and Scope Lens. Rapid Fire Scarf also got a nice buff. If you now scoop up three Pokemon with a Dragon Rush Drink Claw, your Rapid Fire Scarf instantly it activates after one basic attack, which is a huge buff to Guard Chomp. Can definitely recommend, can be played a top path, bot path, or central area. And we are still at Aronas because Aronas just have so many strong Pokemon right now. Mimikyu, of course, is still super, super frustrating to be up against. One of the best junglers currently in the game. I would mainly recommend only playing this in Central Area. I really don't think a top or bot path Mimikyu is all too well. But of course, you can still do it, especially if you have someone with XP share. Shadow Sneak play rough is by far the best build with a Muscle Band, Razor Claw, Attack Weight for held items. Metagross is another amazing all-rounder that can be played in top, bot, or central area, so very flexible. Gyro Ball and Magnet Rise being by far the best build for it, with a muscle band, weakness policy, and attack weight. Can uh, straight up just dominate team fights. I still kind of prefer in central area because landing phase can be a bit difficult sometimes, but once you reach level 5, uh, it's going to be very, very strong. Then Trinita is also still a great Pokemon with a Sand 2 menu though. I would recommend it over Ancient Power, but Ancient Power can also be totally fine with a Muscle Band, a Tech Great Weakness Policy. And you can either play a Stone Edge or Dark Pulse. Both are totally fine. And Stone Edge just gives you a bit of better early and mid game, while Dark Pulse gives you a bit more CC 
and also better late game. We made it to the last round on this list, someone that you really have to practice a lot to be good at, so I can't really recommend it unless you put a good amount of maybe hours or something into Serena, but once you understand this character, it's absolutely amazing for ranked, and in this season as well still works totally fine. We just go double stacking with weakness policy, and try to get our stacks done and then just take over the game once we reach level 6. Now towards attacker Pokemon who don't do all too well currently, I would say in the meta, but Delphox definitely feels like one of the stronger ones with buffed Fire Spin. You can either play Fire Spin Mystic Fire with a cooldown reduction build, you can also still play Mystic Fire Flame Charge, you can play Fire Spin Fire Blast, all of those builds are good and all of them work. Just gotta change maybe your head items around a bit, but not even either. You can just play pretty much anything depending on what opponents have. Mystic Fire will always be a bit, bit better if you play Central Area, while Fire Blast will be a bit better if you play a lane. Next up, we have Inteleon, who will just always be one of the most consistent uh, top or bot path Pokemon, due to just one of the best last hits in the entire game. Still, Snipeshot Fasting is by far the best build if you want to win games with a double glasses choice wise, and of course, a spoon. Next up, quite an underrated build with Veil and Gleam Ninetales. Also got above this patch called Rapid Fire Scarf. Again, hit now activates on multiple targets at the same time. So sometimes you can activate your Rapid Fire Scarf even faster. And also, Muscle Band will attack or do proper damage to multiple targets at the same time. So this got above this patch, we play Muscle, Rapid and Spoon with seven red emblems. Next up, one of my current favorite attacker in the entire game in Chandelure. Flamethrower in Prison, currently the best build, just because they buffed in Prison and there's a lot of melees going on around right now. I definitely think it's better than Pointer, guys. I mean, you, see, you saw, right, how many all around us are in this video. Their in Prison definitely is the right choice against those. We can go for double glasses and spoon, and we can also replace, if the enemies have healing, we can replace vice glasses with the curse incense item. Even though Electrodiff was nerfed a bit ago, it's still an absolutely strong build. Currently the best Maridon build with a potion, resonant guard spoon. And if you want to be like me, you can also play a cookie, but you can also replace cookie with like focus band or choice specs or pretty much any other item that you fancy. But resonant guard Ocean and Spoon is definitely feels like the best on it. It just allows you so much more often to actually get into your empowered Electro Drift and just surviving on one HP. And for the last attack on this list, we have Sludge Bomb, Solar Beam Venusaur. Very straightforward attacker, has a lot of long range damage and Sludge Bomb currently actually being quite, quite good as well. One of the, or if not the best sniper in the game. Can definitely recommend playing it with Energy Amplifier, Choice Specs, and also a spoon. Can either go central area, top or bot path, mainly played in top and bot, but a jungle central Venusaur is definitely also something you can consider. Now we have speedstars, and currently the best speedstar is still Drio, even after the nerf, with a Jump King tri tech being its best build. You have two combinations right here, either you can play Potion Cookie, or you can just play Full Heal and no Cookie and replace it with either Charging Charm or Razor Claw. Those are the two options, and it's still such a strong Pokemon. Leafeon as well is still way too strong, and just make sure you don't play Solar Blade. Like Solar Blade is actually quite, quite bad right now. I definitely cannot recommend playing it. If you decide to go for Leafeon, only play Aerial Ace and Razor Leaf with Attack Weight, Razor Claw, and Energy Amplifier. You can also play Exit Attack, Eject Button, or Shininja Doll. All of those work totally fine. Next, we still have Mioscarada with uh, two different builds. Either Trailblaze Night Slash with Muscle Scope Razor, or we just go Double Team and Flower Trick with Attack Weight, Razor Claw, and Energy Amplifier. And then for last, a Talon Flame is actually quite, quite good right now, especially after the buffs as well. Fly Flame Charge is a very annoying build to deal with, can also be played pretty much anywhere, because Talon Flame can actually also go bot or top path quite, quite easily. But of course, still best in central area. With Eject Button as our battle item, and for health items, we play Attack Bait, Charging Charm, and Razor Claw. Now on to the Defender Pokemon, where Ho is currently one of the best Pokemon in the entire game, but I would definitely recommend playing it like a Defender as well instead of the damaged version, which at the start of course was more fun, but the Defender version definitely makes more sense with Weather and Guard, Focus Band, XP Share, and always Fire, Spin, and Sky Attack. Slowbro, another top 3 Defender, Surf Telekinesis I think is the best, but you can also play Amnesia, or also play a Sky Amnesia bit if you really want to, but I think Focus Band, Resonant Guard, XP Share is the best Slowbro bit. You can also sometimes replace a Muscle Band with one of those if you just want a bit more attack. In this game right here I played no XP Share, but definitely XP Share is the way to go. And then of course, big surprise, Trevenant is still an absolute buster character, either Curse Horn Leech with a damage bit, double stacking weakness policy, or you play him like a defender with a wood hammer and horn leech and then also put on xp share with a resonant guard 
and a focus band. And for the last category, we of course have support, starting with the Pokemon that is probably the least support of all the supports, Mr. Mime, one of my favorite Pokemon in the entire game. There's two builds I can recommend with the Barrier Confusion. Either you go for a full damage build like I usually do with Special Specs, Spoon and Choice Specs, or you go for more a supportive or like semi-supportive build with Focus Band, or not Focus Band, Resonant Guard, XP Share, and then you can either go Special Specs, Spoon or Choice as your third item, but yeah, XP Share, Resonant Guard, and then one damage item on top of it. Then the first real main healer support with Blissey, still a very, very strong Pokemon, Softboard Egg, Egg Bomb, or the standard bit with a special specs body barrier and XP share. And of course, it's an absolute classic, one of the best solo queue supports, as you can just kind of also play like a semi attacker. You're just going to be very aggressive most of the time. Point puff cotton spore being the best bit, allowing you to stun, to heal, and to deal damage with your basic attacks. We go for muscle band, resonant guard, and XP share. And for the last bit on this entire video, we have Clefable. Now back in the meta with follow me moonlight or gravity moonlight, just depends on what the enemies have, of course, have. So if they have a lot of dashes, you go gravity. If not, follow me is just the straight up better ability. Gives you mobility, survivability, and also a stun on top of it. Special specs, body barrier, and also XP share is, in my opinion, the way to go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and don't forget to like it and subscribe.